SRS and repatriation to Australia. What you need to know, what you need to consider, and how do you avoid nasty surprises from the Australian Tax Office. Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner here in Singapore, working with Australian expats all over the world to make the most of their money. Today we're talking about the Supplementary Retirement Scheme, otherwise known as the SRS system or scheme here in Singapore. Now this has largely been set up and designed as a replacement or substitute for CPF for foreigners or for expats, employment pass holders, S pass holders to contribute to their retirement savings. Now, local Singaporeans can still contribute, but the limits are often quite a bit lower. For non-residents, or sorry, for expats in Singapore, for us as Australian expats on an employment pass, we can contribute close to $36,000 each year as a tax deductible contribution into SRS, which then goes towards our retirement savings and, and can be invested in a pool of different investment choices. All sounds pretty good, tax deductible, retirement savings, all sounding pretty sensible so far. So where are the traps? Well, there are three, and they are very important for us as Australian expats in particular to be very mindful of. Number one is the tax treatment when you return to Australia. If you retain your SRS and you return to Australia, you will go through what is called a deemed acquisition. So what that means is that if you had $100,000 invested in your SRS, and it grew to 120, and you moved to Australia when it was worth 120, that would be your deemed acquisition price, or your cost base or your capital gains base for assessing future tax obligations. Now, if that then grows from 120 to 200 in Australia, then the difference between 200 and 120 will be taxable in Australia at your marginal tax rate, which means that that could be taxed it up to 47% under the current tax rates. Ouch. So that is one big one we need to be very mindful of. No, you can't just withdraw the money into a Singapore bank account and hope the ATO won't find out. No, you can't just use that money to go and buy a house or spend it on a holiday. The obligation to report it as an Australian tax resident does not change. Number two is the penalties on withdrawals. If you withdraw this money prior to the statutory retirement age, which is currently 63, then often you will pay a 5% penalty on the amount that you withdrew. So if you withdrew, let's call it $50,000 in one go from your SRS, then a 5% penalty on that is $2,500 just because we withdrew it early. So now we're faced with two awful choices. Either we pay tax in Australia or we pay the penalty in Singapore both not a huge fan of. Now it gets a little bit more challenging or at least there is another consideration to be mindful of and that is the fact that the tax deduction or tax that we deferred if we withdraw that money early will often need to be repaid on the amount that we withdrew. So when we make the contribution into SRS we claim that as a tax deduction if we withdraw that money early then we need to effectively pay that tax back. So again, not a great outcome. So if you are planning to retire in Australia, move to Australia again, relocate to Australia from Singapore, then think these things through. It's not to say that SRS should be avoided. SRS in some circumstances can be a fantastic tool, especially if you plan to remain in Singapore for the long term. As I said, tax deductible, saving for retirement, both boxes we like to check. But the penalties, the tax payable and potential tax liabilities in Australia, not such a big fan of. So plan ahead, think through your personal goals, your personal situation, when you plan to be back in Australia and what your tax implications could be. Drop me a note with any questions. Do remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video if this was helpful and share it with those you think could benefit from it. Thank you and see you in the next one.